Hello and welcome to another quick tip screencast. My name is Maciej Lenartowicz and today I'm going to show you how to create this simple yet effective progress bar graphic. We're going to use a couple of strokes, a couple of effects, finally we're going to use textures to give it this great appealing look. So let's get started. I've created a new document and added a rectangle to work as a background. I'm going to lock this layer, create a new one, and mid bar. And with this layer selected, I'm gonna grab my line segment tool and I'll start mapping out first primitives of my progress bar. So I'm going to click in the middle and enter 400 pixels for the length. And I'm gonna leave the angle at zero degrees. I'm gonna click OK. And I'll align my stroke to the middle of my background. I'll change its color to black. And I'll increase its thickness to 100 points. I'll also change its cap to round it. Now I'm going to grab the stroke. I'm going to duplicate it. I'll change its color to, to lighter gray. And I'll change its thickness to about 70 points. Okay, I'm going to duplicate it once again. Change its color. Change its thickness, this time to 65. One more copy, and this, this one will get 40 points, and even a lighter shade of gray. Okay, so this concludes the mapping out of primitives. In the next step, we're going to expand this and add some styling. Okay, I'm going to grab my bar layer and create a copy of it for later use. Now, with my bar layer, with my bar object selected, I'm going to go to Object, and choose Expand Appearance. I'm going to do it once again, this time selecting Expand. And this creates a number of objects. Now I'm going to select this group and mash Control shift g a number of times to make sure that all of my objects are ungrouped. Now I'm going to start selecting all these shapes and giving them some styling. Okay. With the most outer object selected, with this big dark shape, I'm going to select it, change to my fill, and add gradient to it. Okay, if you turn, if you open the gradient palette, you can see that this is a gradient ranging from pure white to pure black, but both these values are set to 50% opacity. I'm, ju I'm just going to change its orientation to 90 degrees and this works great. Now this creates an illusion that the light is coming from the top and the bar is pressed into the surface. I'm just going to reduce the opacity of the shape to 50%. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in and select this shape. Now I'll fill it with black and change its opacity to 25%. Now I'd like to start working on this shape and it's gonna get slightly more styling than the others. First of all I'm going to select it and fill it with this gradient. Now I'm gonna create a copy of this shape and I'll add it and I'll add a pattern to it. And the way I'm going to do that is to create a new rectangle which is going to be filled with black. I'll drag out a copy and this one will be filled with none. I'll resize the second one slightly, make it thicker. I'll select my both rectangles, group them together using Ctrl G, and I'll drag them over to my swatches palette. And this creates a pattern. I don't need this group, so I can delete it. Now, this shape is going to get filled with this pattern. Obviously, that's, the, that's not the result I'm going for, so I'm going to select my Rotate tool, click it twice, and here I'm going to change the angle to minus 45 degrees. And yes, you can rotate only patterns, so I'm going to disable the objects. Checkbox, I'll click OK, and reduce the opacity to 40%. One thing you can do is to change the blending mode to Multiply, it will change very little, or to overlay, which is going to be my choice for this object. 
Okay, our progress bar is starting to get its shape, but it's still quite flat. So let's fix it right now. I'm going to select this, this shape and create a copy. I'll restore its opacity back to 100%, change the blending mode to normal, and fill it with black. Now I'm going to, to go to the effects menu, choose stylize, and inner glow. Here, those are the values I'd like to use. The color will be white, opacity is set to 100%, and 10 pixels blur. I'm gonna hit preview to see what it looks like. I like it, so I'm gonna hit OK and choose the blending mode to screen. Now, this may be a little bit strong, so I'm going to select my opacity and change its blending mode to 40%. Now, I'll create a copy of this shape. I'm good to go. The last thing we're missing is a nice gloss on top of the whole bar. So I'm going to I'm going to grab this shape and using my keyboard I'm going to nudge it up a couple of pixels. Now I'll fill it with this gradient. If you take a look, it's just a simple white to white gradient, ranging from 90% opacity to 0% opacity. I'll just change the angle to 90 degrees and reduce the opacity to about 75%. Okay, I'm going to grab my gradient tool and I'll tweak it slightly so that the bottom edge of my glass is visible. I'm going to nudge it down a couple of pixels and that's what it's starting to look like. Okay, so the progress bar is ready, but if we were to animate it, we'd need a couple of different states. So first of all, let's identify the parts, the layers, or the paths responsible for the animation. So definitely, I can lock down these two layers on top. This will be my glass, and this will be my outer glow. So I'm left with three paths down here. I'm going to select. I'm going to mark you around them, select them, and I'm going to press Ctrl G. Now, this is my group that is responsible for the progress bars fill. If we disable this group, you can see that the progress is zero. There is nothing inside. This is 100. So now we can add a couple of guides and move our group actually scale our group to mimic the progress bar's movement. So let's create a new layer and I'll go drag it just under the background layer. I'll rename it to guides. I'll change its color. Now I'm going to grab my rectangular grid tool and I'll use my smart guides to find this point. I'll drag it out just here and using my keyboard arrows I'm going to make sure I have five segments horizontally and only one segment vertically. I'll release, I'll go to view, guides, make guides. Now my guides are disabled so I'm going to press control semicolon to make them visible. Now I can choose my white arrow or my direct selection tool I, and I can mark key over this region. And using my direct selection tool I can now move this object here or here and so on which will create different states of, I, of our animation. Now we can create an artboard around this object and save out different PNGs for your animator or for your uh, Flash or After Effects specialist to create the animation. So this concludes the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it will help you with your future progress bars animation. Thanks a lot, stay tuned and bye bye.